good morning everyone uh, welcome to the session on 3d secure 2.0 uh, i am honored to introduce uh, ravi badwe ravi is a seasoned payment professional with more than 2 years of or two decades of experience and is having wonderful and credible track record he is been working with many global organizations in his career of more than uh, 20 years in his career of more than 20 years he has played many instrumental roles in product delivery operations which have had significant business impact for the banks and the financial technology companies at present he is working as the director of product delivery in uh, mastercard and is responsible for delivering payment products across asia pacific ravi in addition to being a wonderful payments professional is also a certified design thinking professional and a keynote speaker in many industry events on topics like innovation payments and design thinking he always enjoys sharing his knowledge and helps people like us to understand the complexities of how payment transactions work in today's session we will be covering 3ds 2.0 so welcome ravi to the session let me briefly tell you about the audience we have got audience from different parts of the world we have people from india we have people from sri lanka then people joining from indonesia joining from myanmar also from bangladesh as well as african countries like kenya and we also have participants from europe so that's the uh, broad uh, uh, broad understanding of the kind of audience you have so over to you ravi the way we will discuss the program before you start the way we will have the program is ravi will first make his delivery he'll make his presentation and after the presentation is over we'll have the questions and answers session separately in case you have got any questions which come to your mind in between simply put them in the chat box and then at the end of the session we'll have an independent question and answer session during which we'll discuss all those questions and then ravi will respond to you with all your doubts So Ravi, over to you. Thank you so much, Makran, and welcome everyone. I'm delighted to have everyone join this webinar today. And what a day! It's the last day of year, and I'm sure most of you would have reflected on how 2022 passed by, and also the plans for 2023. Well, I'm particularly reminded of a saying in my mother tongue, which goes as thembe thembe tere saath se it's also echoed in hindi as boon boon se sagar bharta hai and to all my international participants it means the small and trivial learnings and, and the steps that is usually responsible as it aggregates to the larger bigger success and this is quite true in learning as well uh, the sessions like these uh, even a small learning a small webinar session goes on to to build a collective wisdom and intellect that we share at our workplace or anywhere else so with that let me start with the session um again thank you for that wonderful introduction makrand uh, i just wanted to also let the participants know that uh, at mastercard for last past decade i have witnessed some of the great transformation and the emergence of digital payment and i'm particularly excited of how technology and innovation is constantly churning out the ways which is going to change our the, our overall behavior in terms of how we pay and and how we interact with the payment so particularly excited about how the need we have for to innovate and how the innovation then generates the need so the cycle continues but anyway the beneficiary is the end consumers and all of us like people like you and me so in today's session we'll cover about we'll talk about cds 2.0 for sure and that's the main focus and topic but i know the people have joined from different parts of the world uh, and there could be different understanding so i want to build a good solid understanding of how e-commerce general transaction works and what it is uh, which is a quick overview and, and how cds came to begin with uh, it's now called cds 1.0 but when it started it wasn't 1.0 because 2.0 was an imagine then uh, back in 20, 2001 so that's 3ds for us and then 
the focus of the topic today is CDS 2.0. Why is it that a big deal? Why everyone is talking about it? Why there is a mandate in many countries to go and push 2.0? And of course, if there's so much of focus, there must be something new and exciting. So we'll see what's new and particularly the, the data elements and the power that the data brings in as a whole. We know this era is, a, is an era of data. So how that data is helping us to bring that enhancement into 3DS 2.0 and why that is called as a game changer. And again, a, a very quick look at how the future might look like. So that's something that we will cover in today's sessions. Absolutely, we will be happy to have questions uh, in the chat and also towards the end, if anybody wants, and I can help unmute Mike as well. Right, so let's get started. And for different, I know there are people joining in from a different levels as well. Here's a quick view of what Card present and card not present transactions are. These are the terms that are frequently used, CP and CNP. So traditionally, we know what a card present transaction is. When you walk into a store, you're physically doing a transaction. And that's when the card is handed over to the merchant. So this is where all human senses are available with the merchant to validate. Things like the merchant can see the card, can see the person, can can generally have that sense of, is there something fraudulent that looks to me, which is obvious. The merchant can obviously touch the card and check the card. So that's the card present world. But when it comes to the e-commerce transaction, which is CNP card not present, all of these elements are missing. So merchant cannot see the card, uh, of course cannot touch the card, cannot check all Tra the entire transaction is happening by someone entering the card details over internet, right? So that means that all of that physical dimensions are not there. And hence the possibility of fraud significantly and exponentially, exponentially grows in the CNP world. And, and that has been the data traditionally, uh, which we have seen that in CNP, in the e-commerce transaction, the attacks, the, the fraud are quite predominant. So that's the difference between the two. Um, what I'd like to do is have a quick overview of uh, e-commerce transaction. So now we are specifically talking about a card not present transaction, e-commerce transaction. I'm sure all of you would be very actively participating and maybe you will be the shoppers on e-commerce platforms. Um, I know think websites like Amazon and others uh, here in India, Flipkart have changed the way that we have shopped and sort of even conducted a life for that matter. We are now so much dependent on some of the e-commerce and the things that we buy online. So quickly, who are the important players on an e-commerce transaction, which is a pair, which means ourselves, people like you and me, the merchant who is selling the products over a website to us, uh, acquiring bank. And again, this is just to establish this common understanding because these are the words that we'll use in this session quite often. So acquiring bank in, and a payment gateway are the ones which are facilitating the transaction for the merchant. And we will see uh, a difference on the next slide of what the acquirer bank is and what that payment gateway and how they are all working for that transaction to be successful. Um, again, not to forget the payment network. Um, I will interchangeably use the words like payment network or a scheme uh, in this session. They means the same thing. It's the network like Visa and MasterCard, Amex, which facilitates the transaction um, and then also helps settlement of funds from acquirer from issuer to acquirer, and then the issuer bank and their ACS, which is access control server. Um, this is an important component in 3DS or a, or a general e-commerce transaction, which, which allows and enables the issuer to authenticate the user. Right? So these are the important players. And if you see a flow pairs, like again, you and me shopping on Amazon or on any e-com merchant, and we generally go through a checkout process. And, and that checkout process has actually seen 
and, and evolved over a period of time. But in general, talking about just the flow of e-commerce transaction, the checkout process is something that comes when you, we have already selected the goods that we want to buy. Um, you will generally notice that big websites like Amazon have the seamless experience, which means the site doesn't have a change of a look and feel. But if there is a small medium business or, or a website, you will see that once you check out, the website redirects the control to some other page. And that page is a page of a payment gateway. The one which collects the, the card details because most of the small medium merchant uh, or maybe even a bigger merchant are not allowed to collect the payment, the card payments themselves because they may not uh, be in a PCI certified environment or the certifications doesn't allow them to collect and have a direct view of the card details. So that is why the, the control is transferred to a payment gateway, which is generally bought by an acquirer. And that's when all the payment details, like the card number, expiry, CVV, all in goes there. And the payment gateway does multiple things, uh, for like, like reading of that card details, doing basic validations, and sending it to the issuer bank through payment schemes like MasterCard, Visa. Now, that is a general and a very generic description of a transaction flow, but we are particularly interested in what 3DS is in, in, in the first place. So if you see here between issuer and a payer, earlier, about before even 3DS came, all was required was a PAN number, the card number, expiry date, and the CVV to do a successful transaction. But with the increase of a lot of frauds, the 3DS is a authentication process between a payer and the issuer bank, which is facilitated by the payment gateways. So this is something that we'll see in much more detail, but the overview of e-commerce transaction, and then particularly if I can highlight this section here, this is where the 3DS verification happens between payer and the issuer bank. All right. Now, moving on, this is a 3DS. Now we have, if you've seen, we have understood the players of e-commerce transaction. We have also understood the e-commerce flow. And now we are narrowing down to 3DS. So what 3DS is? Let's take a quick, quick view. And with this, I think there'll be good understanding of what 3DS is, who are the players, and what are the important components of 3DS. So, as I said, back in 2001, there was this, there was a, a need and there's an establish of 3DS uh, in, the, in the payment industry. Before 3DS, the only authentication that was available online was CVV2, CVV, the three digit at the back of the card. So with that details, the transaction was possible but that was subject to a lot of fraud and misuse as well. So with 3DS, there was, there was significant change in the way the frauds were controlled because there was, uh, even though there were, it was a, it brought a lot of friction, but it brought a level of second factor authentication to ensure that there is a right user who's doing that transaction. So that's what 3DS, brought to the e-commerce transaction. Uh, and as I said, the purpose of 3DS was to give that authentication step, that additional step to, to authenticate that this is the right user before doing authorization request to card issue. Now, as you may have seen, I've, I'm using two words quite repeatedly, authentication and authorization. And the, the two different meaning because they are two different leg of an e-commerce transaction. And just again, everybody uh, on the same page, authentication means authenticating the user through a second factor authentication or, or, or a next factor authentication to ensure that's the right user who's doing the transaction. Now, when the authentication is successful, generally the transaction is sent to authorization, which is just like any other authorization in the four party model that you all may be aware of. And so that's the two leg of e-commerce transaction, authentication followed by authorization. 
And again, the tedious products that you may have seen um, verified by Visa is a Visa's product. MasterCard had secure code, which is now called as identity check. So in some of your e-commerce transaction, you might see the logos there saying V by V, uh, MasterCard identity check. American Express has something called a safe key. Discover Diners, uh, the product called is Protect Buy. So there are, and I'm sure the, all other schemes like CUP, China Union Pay and, and others have their own 3DS product. Right? So that's how 3DS emerged. And if we understand who does what in this whole 3DS process, acquirer domain um, is the one who onboards the merchant. So any e-commerce transaction, either a merchant is super big to have its own payment gateway and a direct connection, but most of the time, and that's my experience primarily in South Asia, Southeast Asia, is the merchant always have a payment gateway to connect to or, or to process their their e-commerce transaction. So that's the acquirer domain. And that is one who requests 3DS authentication during the online payment. Right? Then there is an interoperability domain, which is the scheme. So all these products, like verified by Visa, MasterCard Identity Check, Safe Key of American Express, these are the interoperability schemes, which provides dedicated way of reading and facilitating request and response of the transaction and facilitating a 3DS authentication process. And then the issuer domain is the one who have issued the cards to us. They are enrolled into these cards 3DS service. Like for example, if I'm a MasterCard hold, card holder, my card is registered and issued, uh, sorry, registered by my issuing bank into MasterCard's 3DS service, which is identity check. So that's the role of an issuer. And when during an online transaction, issuer also authenticates the card holder during 3DS authentication, which means validating the OTP, the success and the reject message is, and the decisioning is done by issuer. Now, in terms of the technology components involved, um, again, you must be working in acquiring bank, issuing bank, or you may be working for a fintech or may have your own payment business. These are some of the components that you will have to work through when it comes to 3DS. MPI, merchant plugin. As I mentioned, most of the acquirers use payment gateways and the big names you may have heard, like in Southeast Asia, there's Adyen, Stripe, MasterCard has its own payment gateway called as MPGS, MasterCard Payment Gateway Service. Um, Visa has CyberSource and, and so on. So, so they all provide a merchant plugin and that's the acquirer domain component to connect, uh, to have the merchant connect to the payment gateway. Then there's a directory server, which is at an interoperability level. The scheme has these directory server where all of these cards are registered for doing 3DS. Um, and that's where all the bins are also registered when you start a new project for registering into 3DS. And then there's ACS. This is an important component that an issuer might have their own or generally, again, these are their third party services who provide these ACS component and they're used by issuers primarily to verify if the card number is enrolled into the 3DS service and then authenticate the card holder during the transaction. So the OTP that we see or even the biometric that we pass through a transaction flows through your acquiring channel and the scheme to the issuer's ACS and ACS is the component which validates if it is correct or incorrect and it responds back in the message with a success or a failure status. So this is a 3DS at a glance for you all, uh, important components, how it emerges and who does what. Again, if there are any questions, please feel free to put in the chat and I will ensure we have a time at the end to respond to all of the questions. Right. Um, again, this is, uh, it may look very complicated, but have a general read later. But at this level, what I wanted to explain, as I explained, the components involved 
a typical 3ds transaction flow starts from merchant merchants are the one who are responsible to do the integrations now when i mean integration the payment gateway that the acquirer has or there's generally an agreement between a merchant and acquirer and nowadays specifically the api the the, the invent of api and the way that the, the big problems it solves that generally the apis that the merchant use you may come across that sometimes it is even a client server architecture for a very old payment gateways or the way that some of the merchants are connected and passing the e-commerce but i'm sure it's the, that kind of a technology is such sunsetting soon majority majorly i have seen that merchants are able to connect to payment gateway by calling the apis from their checkout screen so that's when through their merchant plugin mpi merchants are able to pass and connect through api now two important steps i wanted to highlight here uh, it's a big flow but merchants when they are connecting to mpi the first thing that they do is they verify they send a verify request to the directory server to ask a question whether this card is enrolled into this directory server which means in a simple language whether this card is registered for 3ds service so this verification request in the payment world is generally called as a vrec request and through the directory server it goes to the acs of issuer and acs knows yes this is the card which is registered and then it passed a successful response or if it is not then a, then a rejection response or a response which has a status that this card is not registered uh, through a response called as vres verification response uh with the successful of verification response then merchant is able to generate a par rec request which is a payment authentication request with the with the necessary details again through directory server to the acs and this is where acs url is being passed at the merchant so all of us who have experienced the e-commerce transaction immediately after checkout we have this otp screen and that otp screen is coming through the issuer's acs and that's so tightly integrated that sometimes if you're not even paying attention you will not notice but generally a look and feel will change uh, a url will be changed so next time you do e-commerce transaction focus on the url and once from a merchant website the control is passed to payment gateway you will see there's a change of url this change of little look and feel but there is also a lot of features and functions available in payment gateway to maintain the consistency of look and feel which gives merchant an an additional step of creating that user experience that the the transaction is not routing to any other website so that's all part of a bigger payment gateway discussion so there are multiple models in which the the look and feel and the frames can be controlled but for the sake of focus back here this is how the merchant is able to verify and pass a payment authentication request now and this goes back into acs of a issuer which is where the otp is validated and the authentication response is sent back to the merchant and the merchant's payment gateway now most of the time if the authentication is successful the merchant will send transaction for authorization if the tds is unsuccessful then there are various options available to acquirer and merchant to say do you still want to send the transaction for authorization knowing that the authentication is failed now ideally merchants would say no i don't want to take that risk because if there's a fraud i will be liable but there are certain merchants who want to take that risk because they see that the, the kind of business and that they want to do is much more important than checking the fraud then in that case they are still they still take a call to send this transaction to authorization so generally you will hear words like authentication unsuccessful but still sent for authorization and in that case 
if the fraud happens, the liability rests with the merchant. So again, um, if, if you are from different acquirers, issuers, fintech, there is a liability shift, which we all must understand of what happens when a particular use case or a scenario happens. So in case of a fraud, payment industry has very well defined who takes the liability. It can go for a dispute, but the dispute is settled with the well-defined rules. Right. So this is a flow of 3DS. Now, 3DS was working well. 3DS1 back in 2001 brought a lot of changes. Uh, I see some questions coming in um, and we'll definitely address the questions as I go and end this session in about few, about 40 minutes or so. So we're talking about the 3DS was established well. Now, what really happened? Why 3DS 1.0 is now getting retired and why there is a need for 2.0? So here's how the story unfolded. First of all, 3DS 1.0 was invented or sort of came in effect in 2001. And that's where we all were not hung on to our smartphones. The, the, of course, there were, the smartphones just started coming in, the tablets started coming in. But that was primarily an era of personal computers, either a desktop or, or, or laptop. And we all, most of the e-commerce transactions were happening through browser. So we can say browser-based transactions. And that's what 3DS1 was primarily built for. And that technology soon got outdated in, with the invent of smartphones and the, the big phone era that we are into now. So that's why... 1.0 couldn't support all the other smartphone-based transactions. Then it brought the friction-based authentication, meaning the if you all remember, the first phase of 3DS was where we had to provide a static password. Um, and static password was something that we created with the help of first transactions, first e-commerce transaction that a a user is participating into. Then it came OTP, of course, but there's a lot of friction and, and we'll see about what friction in a transaction does to the, to the overall business and therefore the overall, all the parties that are part of the transactions. And you would have guessed it by now that of course, friction means users going to abandon the transaction and no one participating in the transaction is making money when the user is not doing transaction. So that's the third point, high cart abandonment rate. And this is a very important term, abandonment rate, which means, and why it is important? Because this is quite high. It, it is still high. It used to be very high before even 2.0. It means that the user is not completing the transactions. So mathematically, it means the number of transaction initiated minus number of transaction completed. And the difference is the abandonment rate. And I'm sure most of you have also experienced sometimes that um, we, are, we are surfing something, we almost make a decision to buy, but then if the procedure to buy is difficult, like it's asking for sign up and asking too many questions, even the transaction is asking for multiple passwords, etc there are quite a high chance that we will abandon the transaction. So that's, that's a high uh, card abandonment rate. Um, and there's also a KPI that talks about how it has improved with 2.0, which we'll see it later. And, and again, some of the simple issues like a pop-up issue on a mobile device, which was not very well handled in 1.0 uh, is what uh, one of the factor. Uh, again, th there is a big shift in the way we are doing e-commerce transactions. Sometimes in card, in-app purchases, we have card on file now. Uh, we may have a tokenized account to register. So things like that were not really supported in 1.0. And again, the major difference is the poor user experience. And you would have seen that a major how user experience plays 
in this changed business climate. That's the number one thing that most of the companies want to drive. And by user experience, I mean the entire journey of the the experience that the user goes through right from the sign up to the end of the transaction. So that's the big thing. And that is why 1.0 had to go. Um, again, the mandate is quite different in different countries when it comes to the retirement of 1.0 and implementation of 2.0. Uh, again, it is a scheme-based uh, there are timelines. So if you'll see, this is a MasterCard timeline, which October, which was October 2022 for most of the parts. Again, India and Bangladesh was excluded, and we have an extension to of one year till October 2023. Uh, there is again some revisions happening in Australia and New Zealand for 2.0 implementation. So it's quite different in different parts of the world and for the scheme. So one of the things that if you want to follow through, follow the right news for what is applicable for your region and by the scheme. Okay, moving on. Um, then, then with that, the retirement of 3DS 1.0, people are now introduced to 2.0 and we almost understand why. I mean, first of all, what 2.0 is and what it does to the transaction and, and what difference does it make to the acquirer issue and to the lives of millions of consumers like, like all of us here. And so 2.0, again, it's a simple worded definition here it's a emv standard uh, it's a 3d again 3d secure but it's an upgraded standard which is designed for specifically a card not present transaction and which is bringing a lot of new and richer data again it is allowing the card issuers to authenticate consumers so as an issuing bank it's allowing me to authenticate my consumers without adding the friction and that's the keyword there without adding the friction and that means that all of the authentication can happen behind the scene using multiple types of risk-based authentication so, so these are some of the new words that you will see that has come uh, strong customer authentication risk-based authentication and it all means that we have to <clears throat> authenticate the right users and in the right situation. Like, you know, I mean, a general experience, I was walking into my apartment and the security gate, uh, there's a change of security and they stopped me and asked, where do I want to go? And my experience was obviously not good because I want to my go, go to my home and they should have recognized me that I am the resident of that apartment and they shouldn't have stopped and asked me. So that's the user experience we're talking about. All the good users, as they're called, the right users don't want the challenge or, or an, a friction into the process. But yet at the same time, all the good users want to ensure that their card is not used for a fraud. So where to draw that balance is the key. And 2.0 is bringing that balance of identifying the right users and making the experience friction free for, for for them frictionless and if based on the use case if there is a sort of a situation detected which requires a challenge then it's also enabling that challenge with the help of second factor authentication right so you will see here what it means it means increased approval rates um, and it's increasing the revenue. Good news for all the retailers, banks, and schemes. So everybody makes money. Then it also reduces fraud. It means, of course, it means it's a very obvious and uh, understanding that of, of when the fraud is reduced, the good transaction increases, and there's a less loss. Again, it's also improving the user experience. And I spoke about the user experience, and it just is creating and taking that user experience to the next level. So that's 3DS 2.0. Now, if we just want to quickly understand um, the flow of 2.0, and this is, I have made a kind of, a, tried to 
put a very simplistic view of what happens behind the scene. So let's see if um, this, it starts right at the beginning of the box that you can see. And it says, can the shopper be authenticated with 3ds2.0? So this is a control at the merchant. And the merchant is asking this question. Can the shopper, like, like people like you and me who are shopping on the website, be authenticated with 3ds2.0? So the question is, do both merchant and the cardholder participate in 3ds2.0? Meaning, is the merchant register? And the card that I'm using, my issuing bank, has have they are they participating to 2.0? Now let's take a happy path first. The, the, the thing here which says yes. It says yes here. And both uh, are registered. The first thing that this the, this platform will check that can the friction less authentication flow be used, which means I don't want to challenge this user based on multiple types and dimensions of data because I know that it's the right user. He's doing this transaction from his device on which he usually does. He is he the transaction has multiple data elements to support frictionless transaction. And if it says yes, the transaction is authenticated. And that's the customer experience I'm talking about. There's no friction. There's a good user for which the transaction is successful. Right? At the same time, if the, if the answer of the question that can the frictionless authentication flow be used is no, then it says the challenge authentication flow is needed. Now, which means that this, the transaction wants to authenticate is the right user and the customer is asked to authenticate either by a password, which is OTP generally nowadays, or a biometric. So simple iPhone users put your, or maybe other phone users as well, I'm sorry, uh, who have the, who has the biometric support can just do a fingerprint or a facial recognition. Um, and the biometric can allow the transaction to happen, which is still quite frictionless if you see, right? That, rather than remembering the, the static passwords and so on. Well, if, the answer to the question that the 3ds2 participation is not there it asks who has no who is not participating so if the merchant is not participating the, the merchant i mean the merchant has an enrolled in 2.0 then in case of fraudulent transaction the liability is with merchant similarly if the issuer has not registered for the participant or to to be to participate into 2.0 then the, the liability rests with issuer. And again, the liability shift goes long way. It's, it's sort of, it's kind of complicated because it has a number of rules. So if you are from an issuing bank or an acquiring bank, um, or even if you're a merchant, you should always have that matrix well understood of who is liable in what circumstances and have your upgrades and the implementation plan accordingly. Right. So that's the flow of 2.0. Then again, we're talking about why is it a big deal? Uh, what's the advantage of 3DS? And this is a quick summary of multiple types of advantages that 2.0 brings in. Right. So first of all, as I mentioned, the whole method of authentication, 1.0 had static passwords and question-based uh, authentication, whereas the new EMV 3DS eliminates the static passwords. It's a stronger two-factor authentication. Uh, again, a risk-based, which means that multiple data elements that are passed through transaction is working in a smart algorithm. And also a lot of deep learning is implemented here to understand and evaluate that risk. Uh, and if still required to be challenged than through an OTP or a biometric. So it just brings a lot of good security and a greater convenience both at the same time. And again, in interface wise, I mentioned it was highly browser dependent 1.0. Now 2.0 supports multiple channels, mobile payments. Um, again, there's a lot of development that's happening uh, in field of IoT. Um, there are I, mean, I personally know that there are variables that are coming which will can be used for transactions like a watch uh, as well as a, an expensive jewelry. And uh, of course, there is a transaction, there's an 
payment that can happen through car nowadays where the card number can be registered and tokenized so when you're doing a drive through you don't need to even pull out a card from your wallet so we're talking about a next level of technology here so the this there is going to be support required for a lot of different channels and form factors so that's coming in 2.0 uh, uh data elements and if you have noticed i've been talking about the importance of data so earlier in 1.0 there are about 15 or so data elements available which generally passes from a merchant and acquiring space to the issuer and issuer is the whole and soul responsible to make a decision through otp validations or or issuer is the only party responsible to to assess the quality of transaction and hence accept or reject but here there is about 10 times more data that is available now to flow through the transaction so it definitely means increased accuracy and the whole decision making process becomes much better i mean i do have a screenshot of the data elements that are getting added in 2.0 on the next slide so so wait to watch the, that slide so that's the data elements in the use cases just a simple checkout versus multiple checkout options with use cases the provisioning of card on file i mean we all watch netflix we watch we have subscription based uh, card registration so again that's a different technology and i think we should have a webinar on that uh, on the topic itself is a huge topic of how network tokenization is changing the behavior and the way we are registering to different types of subscription based services uh, again the file the wallets that we are using tokenization all of that is supported in 2.0 and pro and lastly the whole decisioning risk based decisioning strong customer authentication sca it, i i heard that people joining from europe as well so there is a regulation uh, the, the european union has passed pds2 which is also being supported in emv 3ds right so this is a snapshot of all the advantage that 2.0 has brought and again uh, again this is a quick snapshot of what data elements are getting added here if you look at the the major categories around billing and shipping address the buyer and seller location from where are you doing i mean immediately if the transaction is originating from say country that's that i don't go then it's a red flag then there's a payment history what kind of a shopper i am so it is not meaning that a lot of data it a personal data is being shared so that consideration has been kept but in order to facilitate the payment history so that i understand the next transaction is genuine that data is sent over uh, spending pattern again what kind of a user it is or he or she is and more importantly the device id that is making a lot of difference nowadays because gone are those days when we are using the public computer from a internet cafe or some public place everyone has their own device now the device is being recognized in the transaction in the to make that risk based assessment of and to assess the quality of the transaction so these are, these are all the data elements that are passed through in 2.0 again so what are some of the benefits uh, in the ecosystem uh, i think by now you all must have understood and at least gotten a high level idea of that everyone is benefiting in 2.0 consumers like it's bringing a better protection for us to do online payments it's bringing a better confidence i am now able to understand what technology works behind it or even if a, like a, a layman may not understand the technology but it is there it is definitely communicating that the technology has become secure and bringing much more confidence to the way we do online shopping and of course the, the reduction in the fraud that we will see all of the financial institution which means issuing bank acquiring bank merchant uh, payment schemes that are participating the less the fraud the increase approval rate and all in all it means increased revenue it also increases the loyalty so there's a repeat customer 
repeat transaction that increases the revenue. And of course, it's lowering the custom service cost because fewer calls as a fraudulent uh, to the payment ecosystem. It also means less chargebacks because all you know, the chargebacks are one of a very expensive way of settling a dispute. And again, merchants, uh, it is reducing the card abandonment rate, which means that people who are not completing that their buying decisions are now able to complete uh, by giving that environment and the experience with which they can swiftly complete the checkout process, the higher improve approval rate, the lesser liability shift, and the, com the, the compliance that we all need to comply with the global regulation. So I'm sure, as I said, there the 2.0 is the compliance. It's a mandate. It is getting rolled out in a different timeline and different way with the schemes. So but some of, I mean, a top thing to remember here is that it is a compliance that all of us have to comply. When I say all of us, it means the, ish, the, the participating parties like the issuing bank, acquiring bank. And of course, the payment schemes are the one which are pushing the compliance along with the, the central bank and the other regulatory authority. Okay. So that's the benefit to the ecosystem. Um, again, I thought, you know, I'll give you a very quick overview of what the implementation would look like. Again, there are implementation guides for 3DS 2.0, but here are just the thought starters, as I call, for if you are an acquirer, check if your payment gateway supports 2.0. And that's the, the basic step to do. Most of the payment gateway have now started supporting 2.0. Uh, all is... Uh, what is required at the acquirer end is to familiarize the new API specification. What are some of the new data requirements, meaning the data elements that are required to be passed through. And if you are an acquirer who have a lot of merchants, then you'll have to, to do that education for your merchants and tell them about the new APIs and the new data elements that they must pass through. One additional important part, important element of acquirer is the acquirer is the one who generates the clearing file so all of the e-commerce transaction and the authorization that have authorization that happens acquirer has to generate the clearing file uh, which then goes to this to the to the payment schemes like for example ipm for mastercard base 2 for visa and so on so acquirer must include the the required data elements in the clearing file as well for merchants, it is straightforward. They have to integrate to payment gateway and call the right APIs with the new data elements. So the specifications available, easy to follow. They have to follow them and then integrate accordingly. And for issuers, you have to check if your ACS provider supports 2.0. And mostly all of the ACS providers have now started provide supporting 2.0. Update your integration with your ACS and ensure that you're registered with the right payment schemes like identity check and verified by Visa and, and so on. So as I said, there is a big implementation process, but this can be the thought starters of how you would approach on getting onto 2.0, right? Again, a big KPI that everyone is monitoring and that's what uh, is making it as a game changer. The transaction time is improved. And maybe you want to reflect on how your some of your experience has been. Like, for example, buying something from a, um, on, on your um, iPhone through uh, li like a new app through a biometric. Uh, how about doing a, a recurring transaction on a card on file. So transaction time has been significantly improved. Um, the card card abandonment rate that we've spoken about has again significantly gone down. It means more shoppers are able to complete the purchase and their things are not left behind and hanging. It can only happen because the the shopper changes the mind to buy that particular item and not so much because of the frictions that the, the shopper is going through to complete the transaction. So these are the two big KPIs and there are sure others, but this is what the entire ecosystem is watching. 
and there will be more data coming in as more and more acquirers, issuers, merchants get onto 2.0 platform. And the time will tell us where that number be. All right. So that was about 2.0. The future is quite promising. Uh, the, the amount of innovation that's happening in the last five years and so is equal to what has happened in the last 50 years, the new things coming. And I'm sure there will be multiple ways with which authentication process will improve and it will go to a level that we can't even imagine as of now. Your smile can be your new password. So I just want to wish everyone a very happy and a smiling 2023 and want to conclude this session for a question answers by giving control back to Makran sir. Thank you Ravi for that uh, wonderful presentation. Now we will have, uh, we have questions on the question pane and I'll also unmute the participants. So if they want to speak, they can ask that question directly to you. So before I do that, let me first uh, take the two questions we have. The first question is, is tokenization an inherent part of 3DS? When we say inherent, um, actually, first of all, there's two different things. You can have a non-tokenized card go through 3DS, which means your card is not tokenized yet. And even though it will have to go through the 3DS process, because that's a mandate now. So, but what is happening more and more, the as because the tokenization technology is also increasing. I mean, it's getting more sophisticated. Uh, from the local tokens, now the world is shifting to network tokens. Uh, so, so schemes like MasterCard and Visa, they have their own tokenized network tokens. And through programs like M4M, Merchant, MDES for Merchants. So merchants are also able to participate into a well-tokenization process. So with all of that, it means that there is an increase of tokenization as well. And that that way, it will be inherent part of 3DS. But is it a prerequisite or mandatory to have a tokenized through, through 3DS? The answer is no. Thank you, Ravi, for that answer. The next question is, what are the roles of Arcot Broadcom in the 3DS flow? Okay. Um, so, Surajit, I think I'll need a little bit elaboration of what you mean by that question. Uh, are you trying to ask what's the role of telecoms in 3DS or help me understand that question, please? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Actually, uh, at the bank I was working, uh, they were using our code and Broadcom for that authentication part, actually. The, I mean, the um, uh, OTP validation part. Ah, so, okay. So I was just checking whether they are uh, really I mean, we did, or uh, that can be also done by the issuer itself. Okay. Well, I'm personally not familiar with Arcot and Broadcom. Broadcom sounds familiar though, but if they are an ACS company and, and Makran sir, you can come in here. If they are ACS company, then yes, um, they will be responsible to generate OTP for issuers. So the role of an ACS, as we saw, is the, it's a, component that first of all registers all the issuers card for participating into 3ds mm. and during the transaction it authenticates it, it validates the otp and pass on the success or a reject message okay okay so basically they are kind of a third party uh, service provider who are uh, uh, validating OTP on behalf of the issuer, right? Correct. So, yeah. Okay. Got, got your point. Yeah. The next question, Ravi, is uh, can you elaborate the 3DS flags and their behavior, which is sent to the issuer in the authorization message flow? Oh, yes. Um, so, the, so, the you're particularly talking about authorization message, uh, Lagdas, right? So, that means that the authentication has successfully completed or, or maybe <clears throat> let's just take an example of successfully completed the 3ds flags and more than flags the right term there is a data element uh, so if you're familiar there's a very big data element called de48 and there's a sub element 43 
uh, of that D48, which has all the indicators of authentication message. So if you see the UCAF indicator, and of course with 3DS 2.0, there are a couple of indicators added. So in an authorization message, the, D, the data element 48, sub element 43 has the UCAF indicators, which, which gives the, which carries the message of what that authentication message is. It successful, is it reject? Um, there is also flags or codes now like um, um, like challenge initiated, which means that even though authentication may be unsuccessful, but the issuer was able to initiate the challenge process. So all these different combination of code that passes through the authorization message to the issuer and based on that authorization response can be created. So that's that's in nutshell like that. Yeah, I have a small another question. Please. Now, yeah, when you, when, you, when you populate those flags, uh, those flags sent by the uh, merchant plugging to the acquirer or which party is sending those flags to the acquirer in order to populate in the authorization message? Yeah, yeah, good question. So uh, during the authentication, and you we saw that flow of authentication from merchant to the directory server and to the ACS. So when the authentication details come back to the merchant, it's primarily the payment gateway that reads that authentication response and send it and, and initiate an authorization request. So it's a, a payment gateway which generates that authorization message with the details of authentication. Maybe I think I'll need, uh, you'll need to unmute yourself. Yes, yes. I have unmuted you. So I hope that answered Lagdas's question that who, who fills in that details in the authorization message. It's a payment gateway and a lot of configuration that goes on uh, at the gateway level with the help of acquirer and merchant to decide that. That's, as I said, some merchant may give instruction to the acquirers that in spite of failed authentication, initiate authorization request but that has a high risk so these are some of the configuration that gets initiated from merchant through acquirer's payment gateway so in that case uh, if a uh, if a uh, if, um, uh, if if such a fraudulent details has been provided to the acquirers in a dispute related uh, process uh, those will be taken into consideration and the whatever the risk is being uh, given to that part, you know? Yes, yes, definitely. The liability matrix will come into play and then it will be assessed that who is responsible and the liability will be passed to that party. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is uh, Steam also liable for any fraudulent transaction? Like uh, we have uh, on VR service, well, like uh, for 3DS2 or 3DS. So if, uh, uh, suppose the validation has uh, properly done from the scheme as part of on VR service for issuer, and uh, the transaction is later uh, be identified as a fraudulent transaction, so will, whether the liability seat will be with Scheme or it will be with the merchant? <laughs> That's a good question. So generally, the cases are very small like that. Uh, the magician is never wrong, as they say. But um, yes, if there is uh, there's something wrong at the scheme level, and if it is red, it's quite black and white because of the data elements at and the validation happening at multiple points. And these points are defined, the rules are defined. But, but as I said, uh, the the on behalf service will act as per the configuration and agreement given by the issuer or or the acquirer on the other side so so yes largely it doesn't happen if it happens then it will be dealt as a case by case basis and yes that can be accepted through okay thanks thank you sir
Okay, I see we are on top of the hour. I see one more question there. It's a challenge and a response mechanism. Uh, more of A I A M. I I think it's the response so well added when uh, you are ah, responding okay. to okay. Ladas's question. It's sure, not sure. a question. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I I still raised my hand for a question that I had. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Um, Ravi, thanks for all the brief up regarding the 3DS. Um, I understand that it's amalgamation of strong customer authentication along with the algorithm that detects whether a transaction is fraudulent or a genuine one, right? Now, my question is regarding the, the implementation part that you have said. Uh, the first thing is like the, the card user themselves have to first register as a for their card to be 3D secure, right? Um, and he said that the acquiring bank also need to implement a certain uh, uh, um, <clears throat> communication with the scheme and all that stuff. Yeah. How would it work if either of the party doesn't have that stuff implemented and, and the transaction still tries to go through? Yeah. So when it comes to implementation, the individual consumer, the cardholder doesn't have to enroll now it's the issue of bank which enrolls the bin generally by a bin range into a into 3ds 2.0 acquire a bank however uh has to just ensure that the right integration is happening now when either of the party is not participating into the game then that party is the one which is which becomes a high risk or is prone for the liability to move on now, if the issuer has not participated, issuer can um, still send a transaction, but the acquirer and the merchant can reject a transaction. Okay. So there are these rules, rule set, I would call it, available to say if any party in the, in the whole ecosystem is not participating, mm -hmm. what to do with the transaction? If the transaction still needs to go through, and if the fraud happens, who bears the liability? Those are the two important questions that must be considered by all the parties. Okay. And is, is it the same regulation for a uh, hosted cashier model where a lot of e-commerce websites nowadays use a hosted cashier model? Yes. The mo In whatever model, the regulation remains same that you must participate into 2.0 and okay. and go through the the process as we saw okay all right thanks okay very last question from my side please yeah what would you advise as a model rule set for an issuing bank to decide whether the challenge flow should be implemented or a frictionless flow should be taken so there are multiple factors and um, I think largely the issuing bank works with the ACS to, to have that rule set included. The 3DS 2.0 has recommendation on certain rule set. It's a combination of the, the these data elements that we saw. But as a whole, if you are an issuer bank, if you want to understand it's a good user, understanding the critical elements of a device the rules based on the value of transaction and the rules based on any behavioral data that you can gather of that particular person and combine it to see what, and of course, everything has a different weightages. The combination of that will give an issuer an idea that this is a good user. Let it go friction free, frictionless, um, or sometimes you have to protect if it's a very, very high value transaction, meaning somebody really making a, like, for example, a $1,000 transaction, it may be worth giving that a, a challenge, even though you know it could possibly be a good user. So that's the kind of thought process the issuers go through when they decide to go frictionless or with the challenge. Okay, then would it be right to say that the schemes then do not have a mandate or a defined rule set which must be implemented by the issuers no there's no mandate but then there's a lot of service available like risk-based assessment on behalf rba is provided by a lot, lot of schemes now because schemes also have 
and insights into the different types of transaction, they're able to make these recommendations. Uh, these are all, again, on behalf and hence chargeable services that an issuer can opt for. But uh, there's no mandate so far. It is a value-added services at a chargeable basis, but it does add value. Great. Thanks for that uh, response, Ravi. Thank you. So uh, I think with uh, that, uh, we have concluded our question and answer session. Question so, and answer session so, Ravi. so Ravi, thanks a lot for... Ravi, thanks a lot your uh, wonderful presentation and thanks everyone else also for attending this session and i wish all of you a very very happy and a prosperous and a healthy 2023 so enjoy your year in and stay safe stay happy thank you uh, thank you ravi thank you lanka and everybody uh, wish you a happy 2023 cheers guys bye Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.